Hey folks, uh, welcome to the April video. So this one is going to kind of be continuous to the last one and uh, several that I've done in the past. So this one is what I kind of could call a life's project of 500 bad paintings. And this term actually came from my grandfather. My grandfather was a very prolific professional watercolor artist, Don O'Neill, which is my business. I just get DonO'Neill.com. Uh, you like cool California watercolor, go check us out online. Um, Something he told me, my grandfather passed away in 2007, something he told me was, I started painting around 2005, something he told me was that I still had 500 bad paintings left in me. And he wasn't actually criticizing my work or um, anything that I was doing, but he was saying, more or less, compared to where I could be someday, there's going to be 500 bad finished paintings that it's going to take to get there. Not that they'll be bad paintings, but they're not going to be as good as what I do after I get them out of my system. Um, in the last 12, 13 years, I've done very few large paintings at all. In fact, no finished paintings. All I've been wanting to do is study stuff and sketchbook stuff. And I've only done, I think, one or two finished paintings since 2008 or whenever they've all just been studies and stuff so this one this project is called 500 bad paintings and i'm going to kind of take you with me on it because it's actually all these are going to kind of connect with everything else um so if you remember last year i did a video called the painter's camera and i was kind of illustrating a special type of camera used for capturing compositions for drawing and painting like why you wouldn't want to use a gopro or a smartphone why you want something with a really long focal length and bridge cameras are really cool because you get to zoom in a lot so um for this one it's actually based off a photograph that i took in 2014 in san francisco and the whole video, this video is mainly going to be just me drawing the preliminary uh, drawing of it. But I'm going to kind of explain how the process works. So here is a sketch of it that I did back in 2015. If you want to check that out. And that's kind of like telling me like, hey, this is a cool painting to do. Uh, on Instagram, I went and put eight of paintings I did in this series back in 2015 up for a vote. This one won. This one gets made first. <clears throat> So let me kind of explain w what my goal is for these bad paintings. It's the end result is going to be a large finished painting. There might be smaller ones, but I want to do them big. Um, the first ones will be at least the, this big. It'll probably just be more like study paintings. And then if I really, really like it, and this is, this is going to count. This is If I do something this big, finished quality, I'm counting that. But if I really like it, I'm going to make a big one out of it. And it's all going to be watercolor, but there'll probably be some India ink ones on there as well. Um, so let me kind of take you what I've got for this video to kind of show you. Um, here is the actual preliminary drawing. Now, the way I work is I use... Uh, I believe it's called the Camera Lucida on an iPad. It's actually a 10-year-old iPad. Where the iPad is stationary or paper stationary and you kind of it projects the the picture on the screen and then you look through the screen and it's like superimposed on the paper and then you can draw it on the paper this is actually it was inspired by the movie tim's vermeer where it's likely that vermeer you know the great dutch painter used methods like this with technology of his day to do things uh, this is how I did those drawings, and once I discovered this method, a lot of the difficult parts about painting kind of became... Um, my grandfather, he would actually take paintings, pictures of slides, and then he would project them on his paper, and then he would draw them out, and then he would do studies on them. I don't do that. I, I don't actually like the projection for that. Um, I do use a projection for something different. But anyway, so you kind of get... And this video is really going to be... The last 5-10 minutes are just going to be... You just get to watch me draw this with some nice music and some commentary from... But I did two attempts at this one, and you can kind of see, like, you know, it, it, this one, I didn't really happy how it came out, and this one is good enough. Now, a video that I'm producing is going to be called Scale, and it's going to be all about scale and how you experience things at scale. You know, I'm drawing this so small that this is a small little tiny painting. The scale is funky, and then to make it a big giant painting. This is because I my feelings are that I had to make choices along the way. When I go from the photo to this, I'm making a lot of choices. I'm, I'm deliberately putting where I want each line. I'm taking all this information and then I'm processing it down into 
uh, something else. Now my goal was never take the photo, copy the photo on the painting. I'm not any good at that and my attitude is if you put it through stages and put it through steps, you, you know, you cook it each way. It's like, you know, you make a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy with, you know, analog equipment and the quality gets down. But when you do a handmade of a handmade of a handmade of a handmade, each generation kind of adds more of yourself and more of your decisions as an artist into it. So anyway, um, this probably took a couple hours, I want to say. First one I wasn't happy with. You can just watch video footage of me doing both because I got the footage and I want to show it to you. Um, but it's kind of, it's, it, it's not hard. So do understand when I got this far, I, all well, the theme of the painting, the theme of the art has already been decided. Like, uh, I, I'm trying to go after like a nostalgic of San Francisco. Uh, when I took this painting, I was with some good friends of mine for their, you know, end of high school time. And it's such a big time in their life. And there was a close friend of mine where I thought like, oh, this is so like, this is going to be something I'm going to remember. So like, I think of. When I see this, I remember those tastes. Um, it's actually kind of neat. Like these two uh, trains were in front of me, and this building right here. This is the Harbor Court Hotel in San Francisco. If you know the area, this is like a thousand feet away. So it's kind of a, a cool perspective thing. Um, so you can kind of see the original inspiration sketch. So it should look kind of like you know. I like this. I think this would make an interesting painting. <clears throat> but um. After I get this, I don't destroy it. Like several years ago, I was doing a, a series of paintings where one week I would do this and then the next week I would paint over it with watercolor and I ended up not liking it. And um, I'll flip up a couple on screen right now. Okay. Um, but, and the reason why is because I destroyed the line drawing to get the painting. So this method, I'm not going to do that. This method, I take a tracer device, which is you slide it over it and then it projects it on a wall. And then I'm going to produce <clears throat> a larger drawing of it. <coughs> and um, this is attempt one. Wasn't happy with it, but it, it's going to illustrate the story. Um, this paint picture goes on the wall. So now when I'm copying it and to enlarge it, I'm, I'm not doing uh, a photo to enlargement. I'm doing a line drawing. And these little ink lines... They're really small, but when you see them like this, they get they get quite large. So now you have to make another set of decisions is when you enlarge it, where do you want the lines to go? Because, you know, your pencil is really thin, but the line on the screen, you know, on the wall is kind of thick. So you have to you have to meticulously figure it out. Um, so there'll be another enlarged one of this and it's actually probably going to crop in a little bit, but that's fine. The painting's actually going to be a square painting. My paintings are going to be squares, at least for a while, because the source footage I want to use, the source photos I want to use are all squares. Um, now, I, I didn't finish this for this video, and this actually isn't the interesting part, getting this perfect line drawing, but I'm going to describe how I'm going to do it. Um, enlarge it, pretty straightforward, put the tracer on there if you've ever used one of these, really easy. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a sheet of tracing paper, and I'm going to put it over, and it's all going to be taped on. So you can still see that, and then I'm going to draw it again. And the second one is going to be where I tighten everything up. I clean everything up. It's going to be a clean line drawing. There's going to be no ambiguity, no squigglies, unless I want a squiggly. Everything is going to be tight and controlled. It's going to be, it's going to be more tedious than anything else. Um, but the way to do it is you just have this taped to your drawing board, and then you have your tracing paper taped to your drawing board, and then you just trace it out. So the enlarged drawing doesn't get really damaged. You, you can go back and redo it. Like I say, this doesn't get damaged. So if I want to go back and do it again, I can do it again. Each generation, it's going to be uh, non-destructive. So I take that and then so this is, I, I don't know, I'll probably get this on video at least once. And I go and I just trace it, but I clean it and I make it look really, really as good as I can get it. I use erasers. I use everything in my ca I can to make it a clean line drawing. Um, and this is a trick illustrators use. Um, and if I have to, I'll get another piece of tracing paper over the first one. And so like, you know, I trace, trace one out and take that sheet off and then put that sheet down and then trace over it again. With the idea being that each generation, it gets more and more refined. The point is that each way you're making decisions as like an artist or a designer on what you want to do, but your decisions are very narrow in scope. I'm not thinking what colors, what values, what theme, what's, I'm not thinking 
anything. I'm not thinking of the city. I'm not thinking of what kind of time of day it is. All I'm thinking is make it a perfect line drawing of size. Because this is actually one to one. This will be the size that so can hold this up. That'll be the actual size of the painting, or at least the small paintings. The big ones, it'll probably be twice that big. Which, to make it twice that big, you just repeat the process. Take this, blow it on the wall, blow it on your, uh, clean your shrine. So, um, from there, I'll do a value study. And actually, this will be another video where you actually get to see the value study. <clears throat> you get to see where I take markers and put it over it. I actually talked in last year's, one of last year's videos about values and how a value pattern. Once I have like the perfect line drawing going on, um, then it, the whole point is taking value studies. Now, you don't want to like ruin your perfect line drawing. I may spend... I could spend all day making that. It, you know, it could be literally an eight hour long process. Uh, the whole thing is, and I hope kind of you appreciate it, is that the final finished painting is gonna take a lot of little iterations to kind of figure out. So that, you know, the final painting may only take me a day to paint, but it took me, you know, four or five days of preliminary work. Um, so this will be like a preview for the next one. But as, I figure this is like a nice tight drawing it's not, but let's just say it is. You lay the special marker paper over it where it's straight. And you just take these Prismacolor markers and you, you kind of make a value study. These are different grays and these are actually old markers. I've got better ones that I'll use. I'm just doing this real quick to be on camera. Where, what this allows me to do is, because I have 10 different grays, is completely do the whole picture and marker. Where I'm now picking where do I want to be black, where do I want to be white, and where do I want all the grays to go? The lights, the darks. And what's neat is that these can take an hour or two, which is not bad. You know, I could crank out four or five of these a day if that's all I did all day. But it doesn't damage the original. So you have these marker studies. And for the... For the purpose of the project, I'm gonna to commit to three. Um, I might have to do more. I'll probably do it on the first try and know what I want, but the whole thing is that each time I do this, the, the it gets more and more refined. Um, it's gonna, you know, like I say, it goes from, you know, consciously taking pictures throughout the day, figuring out where you want back, you know, 2014. And then it goes through, you know, looking through those hundreds of pictures I took for the day for the one that I really think would work uh, for a cool painting. I saw something in and then, you know, editing it a little bit, you know, cropping it, figure out what I kind of want because I'm going to do with squares. And then drawing it out where you take all that information in the photograph and you refine it down. I say it took me two tries to kind of get it to where it's perfect. I could not really get this any better. It, the only one could have got it better if I did it smaller so it fits on the the projector. I'm actually have to go to Pip and uh, just make a copy of this to shrink it down just to make my life easy. Um, that's not cheating by the way. Um, and then doing this marker practice you end up getting more and more refined like lights and darks. Now I've, I said in the last and not in the last video but in the video last year in the values video what's going to be the most important thing is like is your value pattern your tonal value pattern your your original painting will almost never look as good i mean it will because you're going to do a lot more finish you do a lot more refinement but if this doesn't look good if this value study does not look good the painting will not look good it, it, it doesn't matter if you say well, i'll add color to it or i'll add pizzazz to it it doesn't matter see why actually working in black and white I force myself just to think in lights and darks. If you can get a really interesting, compelling pattern just with value, no color, well, you're on the, it's gonna be strong. Now, when you do it in color, it's, you know, it has a foundation. So it's kind of like thinking that's not like building up a foundation. So when I actually go to paint that thing, um, you just take all the lines, transfer them onto the watercolor paper, real easy. That'll be from the nice clean one, not the dirty one. Um, and then, you, you've got your roadmap of the value study and now you're free to go. So the idea is that I'm experimenting in these various stages. Like I, every stage I'm actually experimenting. Where do I want something? Where do I do? And I'm changing things. I'm doing things to where the exact photo, it's going to be, it's a little kind of different. And because it's not perfect each time because it's going through your hands, like I actually think that improves it because it's your, it's your creativity. Uh, it's your artistic decision. So you kind of see, um, 
this will be the next video where I just show uh, the value, the value drawing. Uh, but I'd like to show you just for the rest of this video, kick back and relax. You can just watch uh, me drawing these. It's kind of cool actually to watch because it's kind of surreal how it works. Uh, so anyway, hope you like it. Uh, subscribe. We'll see these 500 paintings. And you're going to see how this kind of plays into the scale. I was actually getting footage for the scale video when I was drawing these because it's you experience art when it's small and art when it's big. And I needed good examples of something I did. Um, but anyway, subscribe. Follow me on Instagram at Riley O'Neill. Check out my business, Don O'Neill Watercolor, DonO'Neill.com. You'll see a link in the description. My grandfather used techniques similar to these, but his... He was a way better painter than me, but uh, he used different ones, but it's kind of the same idea. Uh, enjoy the rest of the footage. Okay, so I already had it started when I started recording. I just didn't want to start with white. And you're actually watching this at 10 times speed. So, uh, and there's some cuts in here, but um, immediately we're gonna know is the paper's moving around. I was doing this on a closet door, like a sliding door. And it just kind of moved a little bit. I thought I could work through it. I didn't want to quit. I wanted to at least take it to where I could point out problems. And this is something that I've learned like with, with anything art. Um, when you do these preliminary work, you can discover problems early before down the road. Um, you, you really don't want to like just like with this one, I discovered I couldn't get the the lamp posts to read right. They were blending into the background, uh, so I wanted to fix that. So it's okay to take something that isn't working and then kind of keep t you finishing it because then you can start it over. Um, the overall goal I have with this whole project, like with how I want to do it, is I'm doing it. I'm, I'm discovering it in sections to where if one section is bad, it's okay. I can restart it. But if I like the section before it, I don't need to go back and I don't destroy anything. But um, like I say, how I'm doing this, I'm actually looking through an iPad. So if you notice, like I'm not mapping anything out with the pen. I don't really like doing that. Um, a lot of people will tell you if you're using photos anyway, you're cheating. But you really can't cheat with art. It's your, it's your project. There's no, you know, art is not a, a competition in dexterity and how good your hands are. Um, with what I'm doing with these, I'm I'm studying them, but I'm also getting like a tight little drawing down. See, I already did the thing on the left but I'm getting a tight little drawing down that I'm gonna then enlarge using a projector so it'll all be lined up it'll all be in the right size but like if you look it's like it looks a little sloppy granted I mean see this is a small drawing the scale is small but it's eventually gonna be you know big and I had to think about that but with this one I was really having problems with getting things to separate you can see here I don't like how the lampposts look um, they just do not work for me. And uh, so I didn't completely finish it, but I got finished enough. So here is part two. And with this one, um, like I said, this one's also 10 times as fast. So uh, I believe this one was over an hour in footage. And that footage was actually not everything. I probably spent two and a half hours, you know, making it all together. But in this one, I'm starting with a thicker pen and I'm starting with the lamp posts, I'm drawing the lamp posts in position first, um, which you know I kind of realized like, I have to make these things stand out. Like my what I what I want is I want them to stand out, so I'm drawing them first with a thicker pen. I believe I used a thicker pen on the background buildings, which the background buildings take up this huge amount of space, but they're in the background. They shouldn't be as bold as what's in the foreground. Um, if I can recall, and I'll check on Google Maps. I believe I was about a thousand feet away from the actual buildings. So I'm standing zoomed in on a camera with the equivalent of a thousand millimeter lens. Um, like I say these little bridge cameras, they're cheap and they do this really well. Photographers don't like them, but photographers don't do what I'm doing here. So they kind of don't get it. Of course, the quality is not as good as like a, like a, a, a full frame or even APS-C or anything like that. But you see, I'm focusing more on the foreground. I'm focusing more on the trains. And uh, I don't know how far apart those poles are, but see how they're all kind of like, they're probably, I wouldn't be surprised they're 50, 100 feet apart. But if you look, they're all kind of smushed together. That's because they're all in perspective. I like a really tight perspective. 
it, it's kind of to me it's the illusion of looking way down the street and kind of like how you remember something like oh hey check out those trains or the you know it's just kind of cool um yeah so you can see i'm definitely giving a lot more attention to the the foreground i'm also doing this up against the wall versus a closet door um and that was a technique i've seen some artists do the wall doesn't move and uh it's just kind of easy and you see i'm switching pens here this the pen for the uh the shrubbery is different the trees um and it's like this is a very pen and ink style look and i've got to make sure that it's kind of there's a pattern to it ultimately when i paint these and like when i really do the value studies i'm looking for big kind of abstract patterns the, you know the leaves have an abstract pattern the inside of the uh the roofs on the shelters next to the train stations have a pattern the people standing have a pattern i believe i don't quite remember i think there's seven figures in this drawing um i'm actually going to try to cram a lot of people and stuff i kind of like that where's waldo look i grew up with those as a kid so it'd be cool to to put him in there you know what's cool about waldo books is you know you get a kid and you should take him the kid to the art museum and they look at paintings for 30 seconds and then you get the where's waldo book and they'll sit there and stare at the painting for an hour so it's kind of neat like i've always figured like detail can be used to um to to draw attention because it's telling a story and it's kind of commanding you to look at it there's one i one painting I'm planning, it's like, it's hundreds, it's just hundreds of people. It's a crowd of hundreds of people and it'll be, it'll read like a pattern, but, but cool. And you can see the sun is actually setting. I did this with uh, window light. Um, I didn't have a whole light set up, but I had to go readjust the camera. And the camera that I'm using is a Nikon Z50 to record this. And I believe I'm using the 50 millimeter 1.8 lens for some of it. I think this part, and then I'm also using the DX kit lens. Um, I switched between the two quite a bit, but I'm also kind of like, you see, I'm like jumping around. I didn't want to get every little thing. So now I'm getting the background and I'm doing this with thinner pins. And my whole thing was, I figured, well, if the lines are thinner, they'll stand, they'll, they'll, they'll read as a different pattern, a different, uh, they'll, they'll be a different weight than the, the lines of the pole. But I had to do that first bad drawing to kind of figure out that, the poles are going to be an issue. If I just would have jumped into a finished painting, I wouldn't have known that. And so these studies are kind of like learning about what problems you want to solve and what you're going to run into. So it's okay to make mistakes and, you know, do something bad because now you have an objective. Like people say art is so super subjective. And I guess art appreciation is but when you're trying to make something, you really want to make it objective. You want to narrow something down. Like if you notice, I'm not really doing any shadows. I'm not doing any grays. I'm not doing any, like even places where it's, there should be a big shadow. I'm leaving it white. I'm not really filling it in. A couple things I am, but not much. Um, and if I do, it's, it's, it's very little. Uh, there, so you, someone will look at this and go, oh, the values aren't really all that great. Like if this is a pen and ink drawing, I think you'd get me because the value that the values aren't good. You know, there's no mid tones. There's no, but that's not my goal. My goal is line drawing that reads as a line drawing. And now I'm kind of like, if I can remember, I'm pretty happy with this. I'm, I was actually in a pretty good mood. A lot of times when I'm like doing this, I'm swearing and I'm loud and it just, you know, it's a lot of frustration. But when you, when you start to get it right, uh, it feels really good. And, and I mean, right is when you're happy with it. But the way to get there is you have to do a bad one. And you don't, like I said, don't get upset if you do a bad one, it doesn't come out. Be like, be happy with it anyway. Just because uh, it, it, it's it's going to help you get, get to the next one. <clears throat> Overall, I mean, I, I really like this picture a lot. Like, I like this picture of San Francisco. To me, it, it's going to feel like San Francisco. It's going to feel like you're in the city. Even though, like, if you were, like, looking at this like if you try to take a picture of this scene with your smartphone you couldn't get it it would look it wouldn't it wouldn't look right like you'll stand i'll i'll put a in the link in the description the exact corner i was standing at and you couldn't get this picture with your smartphone it would look really funky but to me there's there's city action there's there's the rail carts it's it's hopefully feels a little nostalgic of san francisco um i really like this this scene uh, san francisco is such a beautiful city it gets a lot of shit from people, and I think it's not deserved. Uh, every time I go there, I just think it's a beautiful place. 
It's very expensive though. That's that at 100% gets. <laughs>